Hey folks, welcome back to the second episode of the weekly wrap up on WRPS. I'm Ben Carpini alongside Danny Nguyen. We got five brand new cards for you guys to check out today. So we're just going to jump right in. Danny, what is the first card that we have on deck today? Uh, the first card we're having today is a Kyle Rudolph auto jersey patch. So Kyle Rudolph, Danny, uh, tight end for the Minnesota Vikings back in the mid 2010s to late 2010s we're talking staple of this minnesota vikings team this is before justin jefferson kirk, kirk cousins guys that we think of minnesota vikings as today of course now a little bit different but um what we're talking about when we're talking about this specific card in 2011 kyle rudolph drafted 243 round two 43rd overall so highly touted guy um but 26 receptions on 39 targets 249 receiving yards and all that with three touchdowns. That's a pretty good stat line for a young guy like uh, Kyle Rudolph. And you got to remember, at this point in time, not that crazy of a tight end game. You know, now we, we see guys like Travis Kelsey, obviously Rob Gronkowski over the last 10 or so years. The tight end has really morphed into more of a wide receiver position. Back when Kyle Rudolph was drafted, the, the position was still very much an extension of the offensive line. So he actually existed in the NFL when it was transitioning from that extension of the offensive line into a more large receiver type player. So he was able to sustain himself pretty well. Kai Rudolph uh, played in two super two Pro Bowls, excuse me, staple of that Vikings team throughout the entire 2010s. Played there from 2011 to 2020. Then during that COVID season, went to the New York Giants, played one season there, and then ended his career in Tampa Bay with Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, those guys who were in the older part of their career. That Tampa Bay team was historically very old. But we're talking statistically, this is a pretty good, this particular card right here is a, is a pretty good card from, his, from, from the year that it was manufactured. And I'm going to let you, Danny, take it away with this Kyle Rudolph card and talk about the card itself. I think we have the numbers behind it. What are we talk? What are we looking at uh, on camera today? Uh, so, so the card itself is in good condition. The set it's from is absolute. You don't really want a card from that. I mean, you don't want a set like that. It's usually the more lower price ones, and not the particular uh, card you will want to go for or set. In other words, uh, the auto is nice. the The card is carved to have the word NFC on it. Uh, the card overall looks pretty nice. Uh, what do you think about it, Ben? So I'm going to give this card a 8.5. And I feel like Rudolph, you know, this is a guy who maybe not the biggest name in the NFL. And I think NFL nowadays and professional sports in general is who scores the most points, who has the most touchdowns. And sometimes that's not the best player on the field. And I think Kyle Rudolph, his numbers don't show, you know, he's not a thousand yard receiving tight end, but that's pretty rare. Nonetheless, he's not a guy who's getting, you know, five, six targets a game. But you know what he is doing? He's consistently giving results to the Minnesota Vikings. And in this card as a rookie, I think you can't discount that. Kyle Rudolph, 8.5. I think that's a fair rating. Danny, what are you thinking? Uh, my rating, I give it an 8 out of 10. Like you said, he's not a big name. Like if you talk about best tight ends ever, you don't really hear about Kyle Rudolph in the conversation. You would hear more of like Rob Gronkowski, Travis Kelsey, and more. But yeah, that's my rating. All right, what's the next card we got, Ben? So the next card that I have up for today, I have Stephen Ridley, who is a former New England Patriot and a running back on the team that would eventually go to Super Bowl 46 as well as Super Bowl uh, 49 versus the Seattle Seahawks. This is a, a pretty rare card, in my opinion, mostly because Stephen Ridley is a lesser talked about member of the New England Patriots. Now, I'll tell you guys right now, Stephen Ridley played in a time where the New England Patriots, it had been you know, a couple years since they won their last Super Bowl. The last time they won up to this point was 2005 versus, I believe, the Carolina Panthers um, in Super Bowl 39. So now Stephen Ridley's drafted in 2011, uh, 370 overall by the New Patriots, not that had won a Super Bowl in recent years. So now we're talking about a player who, can he lift the New England Patriots up in their running game as part of the game where the Patriots had never really had one guy. And Stephen Ridley did a pretty good job of that. On 87 rushing attempts, he had 447, 441 rushing yards and one touchdown in his rookie season, which is the year that this card is from. Played for the New England Patriots from 2011 to 2014. Suffered an injury in the 2014 season. He would end up winning a Super, get a Super Bowl ring that year, but 
wouldn't really remain on the Patriots for that long, go over to the New York Jets the year later in 2015, bounce around to the Atlanta Falcons a year later, and then would end his career on the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2017 and 18 seasons. So a guy that didn't really pan out like we would have wanted to, he was a pretty good player at LSU, but coming into the NFL, just some things didn't really work out. And he had that injury that ended his season and James White kind of took over the backfield. LeGarrette Blunt took over the backfield in New England. So, you know, we've seen cooler guys, but this Stephen Ridley card I think is unique in the sense that I don't see a lot of Stephen Ridley anymore. And I think that's why I like this card a lot. Uh, but Danny, what are we looking at today card-wise? So the card is uh, from, I think, uh, Gridiron Gears, I think. Um, the card is nice. The jersey patch looks good. It's in a uh, con good condition. Uh, when we talk about Stephen Ridley, we don't really know him as a Patriots running back. If we talk about a running back from the Patriots, we hear about Curtis Martin and, like you said, uh, James White. But, yeah, the card itself is in nice condition. The player, he did okay as a running back. He's probably one of the top ten. Uh, yeah, that's all i got to say about it. What do you think about it, Ben? If I have to give this card a rating out of 10, Danny, I'm going to lean more on the conservative side when we're talking about Stephen Ridley, and I'm going to give a 7.5. You know, I like Stephen Ridley a lot. I do think that his career didn't pan out the way that it should have or the way that it could have. Injuries kind of wrecked his career a little bit, but Stephen Ridley, I think, was a good player, very good player at LSU. Coming into the NFL was a pretty promising young kid and just a career that had some bad turns. So I think a 7.5 is a pretty fair rating, especially when you consider that the card is a pretty nice card as well. It's also a rookie card. But yeah, Danny, I think 7.5 is a fair rating. What are you thinking out of, out of 10? Uh, for my rating, I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, the card itself is nice, but for me, I just don't know the player enough to the point I can give it a higher rating. And plus, there's just running backs, and right now they're not doing so well. Well, in contract wise, or the player doing well in general, but yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. What's the next card, Ben? So the next card that I have, and we've grown pretty familiar with this player over the years as New England fans certainly. That is number twelve, New England Patriots quarterback, Mr. Tom Brady. Now, Tom Brady, I don't even really have to have many notes on this guy because as a New England fan, I could talk about Tom Brady all day. And you can see on that card, front and center, is the 2000 NFL draft patch. Uh, Tom Brady drafted sixth round pick 199 in 2000, and his his drafting was kind of historically bad. His draft um, profile was really just not that good, and if you've watched his combine performance, he had one of the slowest 40 times for a quarterback I think ever recorded, Danny. It's really just not a very athletic-looking quarterback, but you've heard stories about him going up to Mr. Kraft and saying, you made the best choice to draft me in this draft. There are, you know, umpteenth amount of quarterbacks who you could select and you're choosing Tom Brady and look how well it turned out. But when we're talking rookie season, Tom Brady only had three passing attempts the whole season. One of those was a completion for six yards. So really did not see the field much at all. He's a backup quarterback at this point to Drew Bledsoe. So if we're talking Tom Brady's rookie year, statistically, there is almost nothing to talk about. But if we're going to talk about how legendary that this card is and the fact that we have a rookie card of the best quarterback to ever play in the NFL, that's pretty, pretty rare. And, I mean, this card, I could speak about Tom Brady for days, but as far as we're going for the card itself, Danny, I'd like you to tell me a little bit more about what it is that we have on screen today. So the card itself is in good condition. The green aroma around the emblem looks nice. Tom Brady's uniform, in my opinion, it's probably one of the best uniforms, in my opinion. That's not to say to anyone else. But overall, the card looks nice. The draft pick uh, jersey patch is not exactly from that year. It's just a replica. Replica, sorry. Yeah, but overall, the card looks nice. What do you think about it, Ben? Danny, I'm going to give this card an 8. And I'm saying that because when we're taking into consideration Tom Brady's statistics, obviously they're not there. So that brings the card rating down. But when we're talking about having the rookie card of a player who would end up becoming one of the best players of all time. That's the reason why this card has any value at all. And, you know, the draft patch being a replica, not amazing, but it's, it's still a really cool thing in my mind, at least to have that in a card. So I'm going to give this card an eight. I think that's a pretty fair rating considering all things. Danny, what are we looking at for a number rating on this card? Uh, I'm just going to have to give it the same rating you gave it an eight. 
the car itself looks cool. It's just, even though it's a replica, it just looks nice to hold and just show off to friends or any of that. It's just the, probably the coolest card we got here so far. But we got two more cards coming up that you guys might like. Anyways, what's those? Uh, what's the next card, Ben? So we're going to switch off football for a moment, Danny, and we're going to take you over to the world of hockey where we have Bruins longtime goaltender, Mr. Tim Thomas. Now, Tim Thomas, drafted in 1994 by the Quebec Nordiques. This was a guy who played, you know, he's an American-made kid. Not really that many American NHL players, at least that I can name off the top of my head. I think a lot of them are from Canada, and I know that sounds kind of silly, but NHL is like 60% Canadian 20% finish, you know, it's a, not an American sport despite having all American teams, a lot of variety in terms of players. So he's a guy from the uh, United, St United States, played at the University of Vermont and drafted by a defunct team, the Quebec Nordiques, in 1994, 217th overall as a goaltender. Now this specific picture that you can see on the card, you'll notice that it is not a B on his jersey, but it is a P instead. That is because this is a Jer uh, jersey from the Providence Bruins, and this is a picture from either 2002, 03, or 04. So what we're looking at here is this is a guy who's still in the uh, AHL, not even an NHL goaltender at this point, so that makes it really cool in my opinion. He's one of the best cold goaltenders of all time, and we have him before he was good. You can see there's a signature on that card. This is a season in the AHL where it was prior to the NHL lockout of 2004, 05, the 0405 season he played over in Finland, and then the following season in 0506 he came back to Boston, and so that's where he really started to take off in his career. But what we're seeing here, this is when he's still in the minor leagues, basically, and Tim Thomas, just, just a very good goaltender overall. I could talk about Tim Thomas in terms of his influence on the Boston Bruins for many, many uh, hours. I, I really could because without Tim Thomas, I don't think that the Bruins beat the Vancouver Canucks in 2010. I don't think they go to the Stanley Cup in 2011 and be, uh, lose to the Chicago Blackhawks. So there's a lot of things that Tim Thomas has done for the Boston Bruins that you could, you could really talk about forever. But uh, Danny, what are we looking at now specifically on this card that I really couldn't give insight to? What is going on right now in Danny's head? Uh, so the set itself is okay. You, it's not really a known set. It's from in-game ink you don't even know that you said in general but the card itself looks nice the auto looks the auto looks nice um the condition it's okay if you look closely in the front there's a small nick on it but overall the card it's probably one one of the best hockey cards we've had so far in this series what do you think about it ben i'm gonna give this card today i'm gonna be a little bit more liberal on this one i think i'm gonna give it an 8.5 tim thomas He's the goaltender right before Tuka Rask. I, I know, I think, more, honestly, more about Tuka Rask than I do about Tim Thomas, just based on recency bias, kind of. But Tim Thomas, he is the Boston Bruins, I would say, most successful recent goaltender in terms of what he's been able to accomplish. Obviously, the Bruins not been super successful in the last couple of years, get swept in the first round, then we go all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals the year before, we lose to St. Louis. So it's not like we've had a super successful goaltender in the last couple of years, and then you go back to Tim Thomas where he has Stanley Cup loss and a Stanley Cup victory under his belt. So Tim Thomas, very, very legendary goaltender for Boston, and he's recent too. He's only within the last 20 years. So I think an 8.5 for me, that's what I'm feeling when we're talking about this car. But Danny, what about you? Uh, for my rating, I would give it an 8 out of 10. He's probably one of the best goalies that came from the Bruins besides other uh, goalies from there like Jerry Cheevers and others. But overall, that's my rating. What's the last card we got here, Ben? Last card, we're going to flip you back over to the NFL, and we are going to talk about another very known New England Patriot that is number 87, Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski went to the University of Arizona from 2006 to 2010, drafted in round two, 42nd overall pick by the New England Patriots, of course. Had 59 targets on 42 receptions this particular season, and as you'll notice, this is a rookie card, and 546 yards, 10 receiving touchdowns. Let me tell you, that's a very good stat line for a guy who is just out of college. I mean, we don't see this specifically nowadays, or uh, excuse me, we, back then, we don't see that stat line from a tight end really ever. And we're talking about a kid who's only 22, 23 years old, and he's, he's making waves. Rob Gronkowski, to me, is single-handedly the reason why the tight end has become the fifth wide receiver on the field. And you, know, you see guys like Travis Kelsey and George Kittle and all these other guys who are 
I think honestly modeling their play after after Rob Gronkowski because he is the the prime primary example of what you want to be as a tight end in the NFL. And when you're seeing a 23 year old guy basically change the game for the NFL tight end and come in in, in, in his rookie season and have almost 600 receiving yards, 10 receiving touchdowns, and that many only on that many targets. That's that's a very impressive statistic. But Rob Gronkowski, 2010 through 2018, played for the New England Patriots, had three Super Bowl victories in that time period between 49 versus the Seahawks, Super Bowl 51, where he actually didn't play. It was Martellus Bennett who played in his stead. He was injured for that game. And Super Bowl 53, where we beat the Los Angeles Rams, one of the lowest scoring Super Bowls of all time. But after that, took a one-year hiatus in 2019, came back after Tom Brady went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and played there for two years and won a Super Bowl versus the Kansas City Chiefs. But Rob Gronkowski, very successful career. And this particular card, to have a rookie card of the best tight end of all time, uh, particularly when he had a very good rookie season, that, that's a really cool card to have your hands on. And I would say one of the most valuable that we have on the table today. But Danny, yeah. what are we talking about as far as this card goes specifically? Um, so the set itself is Rookie and Stars. In my opinion, it's probably the most underrated one. It's a nice set you want to go for. It's cheap, but also fun to open. Uh, it's an auto and a jersey patch. They both look, they both are in a good condition, the auto and the jersey patch, and the card itself is. And Gronkowski in general is probably one of the made this sport a lot more fun in general it's just when you see him on the field it just looks a lot more fun and just like he intensifies the sport spikes the ball and all that it just adds a lot more like a lot more intensity into it but yeah that's all i gotta say about the card what's your rating ben I'm going to give this card the highest rating of the day today, Danny, and I'm going to say a 9 is a very good rating for this card. I really like Rob Gronkowski. Of course, as a New England Patriots fan, you know Rob Gronkowski is the guy. When you're ta talking about Tom Brady, you're talking about Rob Gronkowski or Julian Edelman or one of those guys, but Gronk, easily, I would say, the most impactful on the game of football other than Tom Brady. He's really just changed the game for tight ends. He, and you're right, Danny, he has made the game more fun to watch. You know, when you see him spike the ball on a game-winning touchdown, there's not really much else you can ask for as a football fan. So for me, number nine, I think that's a good rating. Danny, what are we thinking about today? Uh, for my rating, I would give it a nine, like you said. Uh, it's just the player himself is probably one of the best tight ends overall. He beats like players like Antonio Gates, Tony Gonzalez, and Travis Kelsey. It's just... He beats some in yards, touchdowns, and just coolness in general because the way he plays in the field is just amazing. But, yeah, that's all we have for today. Uh, what's your rating for uh, the cards we had so far? So if we're going to take all these cards and bundle them into one big rating, today was a pretty impressive group. I think this Rob Gronkowski card for me was my favorite personally. But I'm going to have to go ahead and say that in summation – I'm going to say today was a solid eight, and that's just because we have some, I think, less popular people today. You know, Stephen Ridley's a lesser-known guy. Kyle Rudolph, as good as he was, not a huge name. But we also have guys like Tim Thomas. We have Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski. So those are some obvious huge victories in terms of uh, boosting the score value. But to me, an eight, I think, is the best way to sum up all these cards in general. Danny, what are we thinking today if we had to put them all into one number? Um, for my rating, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Like you said, it's we didn't have a lot of like popular players in general, but we did have some that were pretty much like probably the most famous. But, yeah, that's my rating for today. Well, I think this was a pretty successful episode today. Danny, I had a lot of fun. Uh, we had some really good cards today. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I had a lot of fun talking about them. Uh, but again, this is the weekly wrap-up. This is the second episode that we've done. I'm Ben Carpini alongside Danny Nguyen. We had a lot of fun doing this episode today. Thank you, and don't forget to check out the next one. Have a great rest of your day.